office hours. Now, as you know, this is being recorded, so you're going to have access to um, this and a whole lot more um, when we uh, post the clip. And I say a whole lot more because I tend to include um, links to things that we talk about and um, any additional resources that I want to provide. But uh, really appreciate everybody being here. Um, would love, love, love if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, if you post it into um, the chat. If you're watching live on Facebook, you can comment me directly into the feed. And um, if you're watching on uh, Easy Webinar, then there's a chat that allows you to kind of chime in with any of your questions. So as I go through the um, the office hours, feel free to, to comment with anything that you want. If you're on Easy Webinar, I can actually pass the microphone over to you too, and we can have a nice chat. I want these to be super casual. I want everybody to feel um, comfortable bringing any questions that they have. The more questions you have, the better, to be frank, because I promise you, you're not the only ones with uh, that question. There's, you know, probably three or four or five or 50 other people behind you that just are, um, you know, maybe a little nervous about piping up. So you're going to do everybody a big service, um, I think, by chiming in. The very first thing I want to talk about uh, are the recent blogs. The first one is targeting on Facebook. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart because it's just so gosh darn important. Um, we want to make sure that the right people are seeing your ads. And we're running Facebook ads for quite a few of our members. We also have a Facebook course that's available, I think, to first and second plane members. Um, within that course, we touch on this a little bit. But this blog is really worth reading because we talk about um, proper segmentation. And Facebook has a really amazing ability to allow you to hone in on people based off of demographic information, like you know age, number of children, where they live, uh, what they do for a living, et cetera, but also psychographic um, targeting. So the psychographic targeting is, uh, in my mind, the, the strongest type of targeting available to us as marketers. You get to speak to people based upon um, their interests, and that type of interest-based segmentation, um, I don't know that it's never been available, but it sure has not been available to the degree that Facebook makes it available. So, uh, for instance, you can actually target people according to uh, implied interests in Montessori education. Now, this is a, not only a game changer, it, it, it actually uh, requires a fair degree of responsibility in terms of the way that we market Um one big caveat to this is my strong opinion is we don't want to uh, to overuse it. Um, for instance, you could begin marketing a Facebook campaign and start targeting people that are interested in Montessori education. Well, that doesn't mean that you're targeting everybody with that interest. You're only targeting the people that Facebook has been able to identify as having that interest. And so we'd be missing out on a pretty significant um, group of folks that could still be mission appropriate um, is number one. And number two, we're not doing those folks uh, a service, even if we're getting enough um, people into our funnel, only targeting uh, folks that have been identified as having an interest in Montessori education. Um, we're still doing a disservice to the people that don't know about Montessori. Um, I think part of our job and duty and re responsibility as Montessorians is to spread the word about Montessori and the Montessori model. And so I, I don't want to overuse this, but I do want to make the point that this is available to us. One of my favorite things to do is test different audiences against each other. Um, and it's also kind of a lot of fun to figure out what the common denominators are uh, around Montessori parents. So, you know, for instance, one of the things that comes up a lot on quite a few of our calls is uh, Montessori parents tend to um, have a pretty strong emphasis on organic foods. And, you know, when I say that, you might say, gosh, that has nothing to do with Montessori. And it might not, um, you know, it might not be a direct correlation to the Montessori model per se. Maybe it is, maybe there's literature out there that I don't know about. But if there are common denominators in the people that are coming to your school, it stands to reason that we can use those common denominators in order to identify other mission appropriate parents. And so in the world where we can find interest-based segmentation, the example used in this blog is outdoor recreation um, or farmer's markets um, or, you know, free trade uh, or fair trade, excuse me, I think is a really good one. Um, since Montessori education, you know, one of the, the primary focuses is peace and um, you can use interest-based segmentation in order to ensure that you're speaking to a people that you want to speak to, um, which is exceptionally appropriate. You can also choose demographic information like um, we can find parents with children of a certain age, which again is just, you know, pardon the analogy, but it's fishing with dynamite. Instead of pushing out the way that we used to, instead of pushing out marketing to uh, everybody in the whole wide world, um, you know, like uh, television and radio, um, you, you really get to hone in 
and um, focus on the folks that we're going to be able to make the biggest impact uh, with and for. So this blog is available to you. It also uh, coincides with the course that we have. There's a course on um, building your Facebook ads. And this is, if you haven't taken this yet, uh, I'd strongly recommend doing so because I think that Facebook is one of um, one of the two best networks to go in order to find mission appropriate parents. I think Google's number one, uh, honestly, without question. I don't even think it's debatable anymore. Uh, Google is definitely the, the, the first and most important network, but it's also the hardest to manage. Um, it's the hardest to manage and it's without question the most expensive. Um, you know, a lead on Facebook can be, you know, between 50 and 100 bucks. Um, in our experience, a, a mission appropriate Montessori parent who is scheduled a tour tends to be between 50 and 100 dollars cost per acquisition. On Google, that number can climb up to 200 dollars or 250 dollars, depending on how um, competitive your market is. So Google's far more expensive than Facebook, which makes Facebook the lower barrier to entry, which I think is why it's so popular. So we're trying to build uh, resources around these two models. It really helps you kind of take take this and run with it. Um, the, the next blog I want to highlight that just went live and is m possibly, I think, one of the best blogs we've ever written. Um, this is from Pamela, one of the writers at Solutions 8. Um, this is 16 must-haves for every Montessori school website. Now, you don't really have to have all of them, of course, um, but most of them, I would say, are pretty darn important. And this is very Montessori specific. As a matter of fact, you'll notice that we've used some websites from Needle Marketing members. So if you find your site highlighted here, it's done so in a, a very positive context. Um, and we just wanted to show people examples of uh, websites that are that are doing it right. Um, there's Hollis Montessori. Shout out to Hollis. Um, the There's Sunstone. Um, yay. Uh, these steps are a little daunting. There's a lot here. It, you know, it stands to reason that you probably don't have all of these um, deployed or in place. That's perfectly fine. But uh, it, it is worth going over these items and then just making sure that these have been deployed on your website in some form or fashion. A lot of this is stuff that you're going to be used to seeing. Um, and it's divided up into different se sections, engagement and content. Um, we talk about Calendly a lot. Everybody knows that we're obsessed with Calendly. And for good reason. Um, we recently, I posted a, a case study from, from Donna at Aldea Montessori, who's a third plane member. And um, just adding Calendly to her site yielded four confirmed tours over one weekend. I think she added Calendly on a Thursday or a Friday. And then when she woke up on Monday, she had four tours. Um, and she had, uh, had a, a managerial problem. I don't think she'd mind me sharing um, and getting tours scheduled. So Calendly can be a truly an absolute game changer. I know it's a little daunting. I know it, sometimes it feels like you're losing a human touch. I promise you that's not the case. As a matter of fact, automation helps us get to the human touch faster because now you get to follow up and introduce yourself and let them know what to expect. So automation shouldn't replace the human touch at all. It, it should actually amplify the efficacy of it because it helps us sort of get past like the tedious rote and routine housekeeping junk and jump right into what really matters. So adding calendar to your site is really important. Gated tuition is another one that's just really massively important. This is something that I get a little pushback on, which is no big deal at all. I totally understand if this isn't your comfort zone. But our strong opinion, and this comes directly from Matt Hillis at Bergamo, um, our strong opinion is that you shouldn't make your tuition publicly available um, on your website. Instead, if people want to see your tuition rates, they fill out a form. And when they fill out that form, they can select the programs that they're interested in or the locations they're interested in, if you have multiple locations, and ask for the tuition rates to be emailed to them. The email comes out instantly. It comes from MailChimp, and it's automated. And now a few things happen. The first one is you have their contact information so you can follow up with them. As a matter of fact, I actually recommend that you get the phone number as well. Uh, Matt didn't want to do that because he gets so many inquiries. They don't have um, the time or wherewithal to follow up with all of them. Um, but for smaller schools, uh, get name, email, and the phone number because when somebody downloads your tuition, what I would like to see happen is, um, you know, maybe your director of missions follows up and just provides value. You're not there to sell anything. You just call up and say, hey, Suzanne, I noticed that you you downloaded our tuition uh, information. I just wanted to, to follow up and make sure that you have all the information you need. I wanted to see if you had any questions about the Montessori model in general. Can you tell me a little bit about your kids, your struggles, your problems, et cetera? Um, and just, just hop on the phone and, and just listen to them. And that's the best way to start building a, a relationship. Um, there's some nuanced items in this blog. Adding location information with Google Maps is really important because uh, Google wants to reconcile your information with their database. And when you use their tools to do that, it makes you more relevant. And I'm going to say that again in a different way. 
um, Google has crawlers, web crawlers, little bots that are crawling the entire internet, which sounds daunting and it really is, but it's it's brilliant. It's what, the reason that Google knows everything. And those bots have uh, really massively intelligent algorithms attached to them. So their decision engines trying to figure out, you know, who's relevant for what key phrase and who's telling the truth and who's not and who's supposed to be there and who's not and who's legitimate and who's not. And when Google sees information like, for instance, your address, Google logs that away and says, oh, okay, so we've got uh, Sunstone Montessori and Sunstone is, in, you know, at this address. So we think Sunstone might be relevant to this particular geography. Well, if they see five directory listings out and about on the internet that also list Sunstone at that address, that just validated the, those thoughts and opinions. And then if they see a Google Maps uh, listing that uh, adds Sunstone at that address, you know, that validation takes it one step further. And if that Google map is embedded on Sunstone's website, that full loop that brought things full circle, we've seen that make massive impacts on your organic listing and ranking. So this is worth doing. And there's 16 tips just like this one. As a matter of fact, we, we have a course that shows you exactly how to embed your Google map on your website if you'd like to see it. Um, that's in our courses section somewhere. There it is. Um, so here's a course. It's not very long. I think it takes about 20 minutes at most. Um, and we have a single location course and a multiple location course. So that's a resource available to use your second planner above. Um, but I, I just feel really strongly that this is an article that's worth going through. Um, and if you need any help, there's Aldea. This is the website that we built for uh, Aldea. We just launched it. I'm really proud of it. Um, if you need any help with any of this stuff, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and, you know, be of any assistance that we possibly can be. Uh, on that note, I kind of want to give a shout out to Aldea. Um, Donna took us up on the website template. And so I can show you, I'm logged in right now. Let me log out so you can see without that ugly bar. There we go. So here's what, oops. Here's what the website template looks independent of any customization. Um, you'll notice the colors are very specific and the imagery is very specific. Um, this entire thing can be customized. And when we customize it, if you look at her site, the framework is the same, but everything else is customized to her school. All the imagery, the functionality, the colors, the logo, uh, and of course the content. Um, and there's some pretty cool elements to this site too. We've got uh, a gated parents section that allows parents to log in and view a private calendar. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, download a parent handbook. There's you know a private photo gallery, et cetera. Um, and the point I'm trying to make is, is the site, while it is templated, is uh, very customizable uh, for school. So if you're in our third or fourth plane, this is available to you in perpetuity. You don't have to take us up on it now. Um, it's, it's available to you as a courtesy for as long as you're a member. So just wanted to, to make that point because I'm pretty proud about uh, how that one turned out. And please make sure to take a look at the top 16 must-haves as a blog. This is going to be something that we turn into a course as well. I want to walk through uh, walk schools through how to add each one of these items to their website in sequence. And so it'll be a pretty long course. Uh, it might even be a 16-lesson course, but it would be a great thing for uh, for you to do. Let's say you take one lesson a week for 16 weeks. Um, you know, I mean, in a, in a relatively short period of time, you'd have a very high-performing website. So um, please make sure to take uh, advantage of that as a resource. Any questions from anyone before I move on? I'll pause briefly. Facebook or webinar. All right, I'll keep going. Um, one of the comments I wanted to make is the content is live, which is awesome. This is sort of one of the favorite uh, resources that we provide, or at least one of my favorite resources. So if you are a second, third, or fourth plane, um, you now have uh, the content available to you to use. So for my third and fourth plane members, these blogs are up and ready to rock. So you have all of the April blogs and the blogs this month, by the way, are fantastic, but they're fantastic every month. So you download the zip file, um, open it up and let's open up April 2nd's blog just so you can see it. Um, Montessori basics, how math progresses through the levels. And this was a specific request from one of our Montessorians. Um, and I wish I had a better memory. And I would give a shout out to who the request came from. I'm so sorry that I'm forgetting right now. I'm a little embarrassed. But this is uh, one of the points I want to make here is if you need something, if you want something, if there is a blog that you want written or an infographic that you want created or a video that you want made, tell, let us know. We're here for you. We're here to, to help um, uh, make those types of things easier and more accessible. So if you've been thinking to yourself, gosh, I've always wanted to make a video on Montessori math. Um, 
because that would just really help me explain those things to parents. If you tell Nito, we're going to make that happen. Now, that video becomes available to all of our members, of course. Um, so don't share anything with us that's ultra proprietary. Um, but, you know, if you don't mind kind of contributing to the Montessori community, and I know most Montessorians don't, then treat us like order takers. Um, th this is especially true for, you know, second, third, and fourth plane members. Anything you need, we're going to try to create for you if we can. Um, if it's in uh, our power, first plane members, um, there's there's obviously some limitations to being on a free membership. But if you need something ultra specific, and and I think it can, or we think it can, you know, uh, provide value to our community, lob it over the fence. Ask us. Uh, you know, I mean, if if the request comes from you uh, as a courtesy, we'll give you access to that too because it's going to help the entire rest of everyone. Um, and I see that Susanna is clapping. Uh, yay! Thanks, Susanna. Was this from you, Susanna? Were you the one that asked for this? Am I not giving a shout out to the right person? I'm so sorry. That's embarrassing. Um, and we've got a few more here as well. I think this one is just awesome. This is fantastic. This is uh, the book list. Um, oh, Susanna's saying it wasn't her. So whoever this came from, um, sorry, I'm not remembering, but it's available to you now. And um, again, you can just see the epic amount of value that's uh, housed in these uh content pieces. And this content, incidentally, is written by a trained Montessorian, um, Christy, who's also a member of Needle Marketing. And you'll see her commenting and posting every now and again in the forums. So the blogs are available to you. Those are up and live. You have all the April blogs. Um, you should also have all of the April emails. Um, one of the things, this is a common theme and a common occurrence on all of my consulting calls. Uh, Montessorians tend to be afraid to abuse emails. And I think that's a perfectly rational fear. I don't think we should abuse emails at all. I think that we should respect people's contact information and their privacy, and we should only email them when we're producing value. Here's the point I want to make, though. You sending out a weekly newsletter is not abusing their email. As a matter of fact, you are providing them with an epic amount of value. Um, this is the most important topic in people's lives. And I'm not being dramatic when I say that. We're talking to them about their kids. I can't think of anything more important. Um, I'm a father of two. And if somebody wants to talk to me about my, my sons, then uh, I'm all ears. And if you're providing that epic amount of value, then I think that you are allowed to send them a weekly email letting them know what's going on. Um, you also don't need to, to, to house or try to manage multiple lists. So, you know, sometimes we talk about, do I send these to my parents? Do I send these to my prospects? Um, who, you know, who, who, who gets these emails? And in my mind, everybody does. Everybody needs value. Everybody who's, you know, interested in Montessori education, send it to the parents, send it to the prospects, send it to your board, send it internally, keep everybody on the same page and make sure this isn't a template as much as it is just to, uh, you know, to get you started, customize the daylights out of these things. Um, so, you know, it, it tends to follow the, the blog content because you have access to that too. So hopefully there's a little continuity there. But let them know if you have any upcoming events, if you have any new hires, if some of your guides have gone through training or you just went to an event and you want to tell them about it, this is your opportunity to speak to people on your terms. If you want to shoot a video and add a video, you'll notice Matt does that for the Nito emails every week. And it's it's great. It really helps with our engagement rate. And, you know, people watch them and comment on them. Um, this, in my mind, is a necessity. And it's hard to do. It's hard to manage. That's why we've done it for you. So third plane members, you have all the content. And, and pardon me for being combative for, for just two seconds. I'm not, I'm not trying to shame you into it. But there's almost no excuse for this one. You can go in and pre-schedule these emails in MailChimp. This will take you 20 minutes. The content is here. Going into MailChimp and scheduling these emails will take you 20 minutes. And we have a course on that too, of course. Um, and if you, have any, if you have any issues, run into any problems, reach out to us. Hit us up on live chat. Shoot us an email. We're here to help. Um, we want to see this done for you. I will walk through the first process for you and with you on a screen share if it means that you'll do it because I think you're just going to see so much value from this. The response you're going to get from your parents and your prospects is going to be amazing. And this, by the way, is one of the best, the absolute best ways to nurture people long term. If you have a parent who's interested in your school and they're making their decision ahead of time, which Montessori parents are an educated consumer base, and you know that better than I do. This is an educated group of people and they're looking early and you want to be one of the people that shows up in their inbox often. And when you show up, you want there to be a value-driven reason. And we've helped you with that. Um, so if you want to nurture people and stay top of mind and make sure you kind of stay in front of them, this is the way to do it. Send out this newsletter and make sure that everybody's on it. Sorry for beating that drum too hard if I did. I just wanted to open up one more so you can, again, just see the content. Um, we maintain continuity with the articles that we're pushing out. Um, and this is just, look at this topic. Three ways to celebrate Earth Day as a family. Oh my goodness. 
who puts out content like this? There's, you know, kinder care is not doing this stuff. There's, there's not a, a, a big box preschool or school, I think on the planet that is diving this deep or, pr or providing this much um, uh, uh, piece driven education. So again, please use the content, take advantage of it. Um, it's available to as your resource. Um, and, and again, the blogs and the emails are only available to uh, third and fourth plane members, but the social posts, um, this is for my second plane members. And to my first plane members, uh, what I've been giving everybody, if you haven't taken me up on this yet, uh, email me or, or, or post on Facebook and I'll give you a month free um, of the social posts. So whatever month it is, uh, shoot me an email and I'll send you that month's social posts for free, just so you can start to kind of get a sense as to the, the value we're providing. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's 50% me just being a really good guy and 50% me wanting you to see, wow, this is amazing value. I'm going to go sign up for plane two because I think that it will be um, valuable to you. I think the $47 you spend on plane two is going to be returned by many multiples just by this one resource. Just this one thing is worth that 50 bucks a month. And plane two comes with a whole host of other resources. So I'm not trying to oversell it, but you know, I mean, the same way that I think you have a responsibility to make sure that you put yourself in front of as many parents because you have a better product. You have a better way to educate their children. So it's, you have responsibility to tell them that I have the same responsibility. So I need to make sure that everybody knows this is what we can provide to you. This is how we can help your Montessori school. And I believe it um, passionately. So again, forgive me. Here are the social posts. Um, you'll notice that these are not uh, self-interested. It's not, oh, look at me, look at my school. This is why we're so awesome. Instead, it's it's pushing Montessori and helping the message and bridging the gap and educating people. This is how we perform socially. Um, next month, we're actually going to be producing some imagery for the social posts. Now, this is dangerous to do. And it's dangerous to do because Montessorians are very particular people when it comes to imagery. I have found out the hard way. So the images that we provide are going to be provided as a courtesy. Um, you don't have to use them by any means, but uh, you can, you can customize them if you want to use Canva, which incidentally we have a course for. Um, if you, you know, want to discard them and make your own, you can do that too. But, but I, I felt it was important to provide the image um, imagery because, you know, otherwise it's just text-based and sometimes that can get a little sparse. So um, social posts are available to my second plane members and up. And then uh, I just wanted to push some of our other resources. If you haven't taken us up on these resources yet, please, please do. First, we have a master list of Montessori resources that is awesome. And if you want to add to this, uh, by the way, if you have something that's not listed here, let us know. We'll add it. I'll add it that day. Um, anything that you know, if you know a, a book that we need to refer to, or if you have a directory or listing or article or blog that you just think is awesome and really needs to be added to this list, uh, make us aware of that. The stock photos is something we plan on building um, long term. So every couple of months, we're going to have more photos uh, taken. We also plan on having some video shot. So you'll notice these are very Montessori specific. They use Montessori elements, um, uh, Montessori environments. This was taken at a Montessori school. We have license to use these images in perpetuity. Um, all of the, the, the talent in these images, was uh, this was a paid engagement. Um, and these image, images are available to you to use uh, in anything you want to use, any implementation. They're available to you as long as you're a NEATO member. Um, and we're going to continue to build this image library. And at some point, we're also going to add some, some video as well, which I'm really excited about. Um, the email nurture template, if you haven't used this, again, this is just a game changer. When somebody downloads your tuition or opts into your newsletter or somehow gets a hold of your email, uh, you need to, we call it indoctrination in um, marketing. And, and that can be kind of a scary word because it has religious connotation, but all it really means is let them know who you are. You need to tell them mission, vision, values, goals. And the only way to do that is over time. Because you can't dump, you know, 10,000 words on someone and say, oh, read my ebook. Nobody's going to do that. But if you send them just a real quick email saying, hey, so happy that we're, we're connected. Um, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide you with a bunch of value. Um, people read that. They engage with it. They've expressed interest by giving their email. And this is available to you along with just a ton of really awesome white papers. Um, and these white papers really, I mean, they're just standalone blogs or articles or whatever you want to call them. Um, these are all uh, used, vetted. Um, so Bergamo has used these for a really long time. Um, and the content here, again, is just, it's just unparalleled. I'm really happy with it. So those resources are available to you. Any questions about the resources section or anything on the wish list that you guys want to add? Because if there's something you want that we don't have, we'll make it. Um, that's part of our value proposition. So please don't, uh, don't hold back. Um, if you can't think of anything now, we've got a couple of things here for you. There's a feedback form if you have feedback on some of the resources that we've provided. 
Um, there's also a suggestion form. So if you want to suggest a type of resource, um, please feel free and we will uh, we'll do our best to create that for you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go over uh, is our course library. We are going to be adding courses all of the time. Our goal is to add uh, one to two courses a month, which is super aggressive, incidentally, because these courses take a lot of time. Um, but we think that's the best way to continue to provide value to um, our our member base. The next course that's coming out is the one that I'm the most excited about. Um, we're going to teach you how to uh, build and manage a Google AdWords campaign. Now, this is dangerous, and it's dangerous for a lot of reasons. It would be it would, it's analogous to you giving me a Montessori handbook and then me trying to potentially go start my own, let's say, Montessori, um, you know, day class, not school, obviously, but, um, you know, trying to step my toe into the, the waters that you've spent years and years and years and years learning and honing your craft in. Um, so, you know, I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but I just want to make the point that, uh, I don't want to mislead anybody. Anybody who tells you running Facebook ads or running Google ads is easy is trying to sell you something. Um, so we're going to give you enough information to be able to run and, and manage these campaigns yourself um, safely. But we'll also let you know when we, you know, encounter feature sets or, um, you know, specific strategies that really need to be managed by a professional. And, and hopefully we ride that line well. I'm not, I'm not purposefully trying to ascend you or sell you something, but I also don't want to, um, you know, build half-hearted education that doesn't have what it's supposed to have. So this course is coming out. We're aiming for uh, the end of March. Um, and we also have a course on Google Tag Manager, which is really important. And if you have more courses you want, please let me know. Oh, here's Susanna saying, would love to see a post on why parents should share why they chose Montessori. So many parents love it and choose it, but don't shout it from the rooftops in fear of offending conventional advocates. This is brilliant. This is why I ask. I never would have come up with that myself, but that might be one of my most favorite recommendations ever. And I'm taking a note of that right now, Susanna, and I'm going to ask Christy to put that on our content schedule. So that will be done. Um, and thank you for that. What a great recommendation. That is awesome. Um, so expect to see that for our May content. And her follow-up comment was, especially in an area with high taxes and schools with good reputations. <laughs> I could not agree more. Um, I'm adding that to my note as well. Thank you, Suzanne. I really appreciate you participating. Um, that makes these office hours a little bit easier. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just a crazy voice screaming into the wind. So uh, appreciate the help. Um, yep, that's the end of the course library. The uh, additional courses, anytime they get uploaded, you'll see them in a couple of places. Uh, we definitely try to push out um, notifications in the recent updates area. We might... Um, notify you via the form, depending on the course and if there have been any, any open questions on it. And then uh, Matt sends out a weekly email and we try to uh, include any of the, the content updates in that email, which you'll see. Uh, we wanted to push the email out every Tuesday, but he's so busy. You know, I mean, he has four locations and 500 students. So I'm sure everybody here can, can resonate with that a little because um, we're all kind of stretched pretty thin. Um, so the emails have been going out a little bit late, but we're, um, instead of, you know, staying hard and fast to a deadline, I'm just happy to get them out, which is um, preferable because we want to keep providing that value. One thing I did want to mention is the forum is a resource that I really want to cultivate. And this is a resource that I'm, I'm actually asking for help with. And most recently, I want to give a, a shout out to Jocelyn because um, she and I were on a call together and I asked her for a favor. And, and she's a, just a perfect case study as to why I needed this and what it was able to yield. She asked me if I had any advice on online record keeping. And I don't because I don't run a school and I never will. Um, because I'm not good at that. I'm a good marketer. Um, and, but what I said was, hey, I, I, can, I can ask Matt to answer that for you directly. But if you can post that in the forum, I'm willing to bet there's a ton of people with really good insight and a bunch of other people that have that same question. And she did. And I was right. Great conversation. And, and almost instantly. I mean, you'll notice that she posted it um, where are we? Oh, she posted on March 6th. Uh, and then within a day she had, you know, just a handful of really awesome responses and, and, and great conversation. And, um, everybody chimed in, including Matt. Um, so here's my favor. Here's my ask of the community. I think in order for us to really build this community, we need to communicate. And, um, 
all too often we tend to do that in a silo. And so I, I'm not trying to dissuade you from chatting us or emailing us or asking questions um, privately. Please feel free to do that because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want you to feel like that's closed off to you. But if you think that the community would benefit from your questions, um, then the forum and the Facebook group are two really, really good places to pose those questions because uh, I think the, the community will benefit from your questions, but I also think that you'll benefit from the community. And the only way that we're really gonna build Neato into what we want it to be is if we all kind of actively participate. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna be a little annoying with this uh, message just in the next couple of months. I might hit it a couple of times, but uh, if you don't mind, posting to the forum and posting to the Facebook group when you have ideas or questions and, and then participating when other people do. Um, that's, that's what we can build around. That's something we can all really rally around. And I just think that's where synergy happens. Um, and one plus one equals three. And, and when, when you can find that type of environment, it's rare, but it's just so valuable. And it's something that, that uh, I think we can all contribute to. And incidentally, the community and the Facebook group, everybody has access to. Um, from from the first plane on up. So um, this is a place where we're going to build a Montessori community that is available to everyone. There's no barrier. Um, you just have to be a Montessorian. And then we, we want you involved and we want you in and we want you committed and we want um, we want your help and we want to help you. So again, enough of the soapbox. I'm so good at soapboxes, by the way. I'm kind of a soapboxy kind of person. But um, if, if you can contribute to that, I'd, I'd just be eternally grateful. Um, and that's it for my list. I spent about a half hour rambling. Hopefully there's some value that you found there. Um, I did want to point out that we are growing uh, at, a, at a really rapid clip. When we launched, uh, we had our soft launch, as everybody knows, in late 2017. And we brought on just a, a select few uh, schools. Um, we called them friendlies. And these are people that wouldn't mind letting us make a couple of mistakes. Um, and after the friendlies uh, sort of helped us vet the process and, and learn more about what we were doing and, you know, where to really provide value, um, we opened it up into um, the larger group of Montessori schools. In 60 days uh, from our launch, we had over 200 members in 60 days. That is unheard of. It's an amazing um, uh, growth pattern that I'm so excited about. Here's my other ask of you, though please share this with other schools. If there's somebody that you think could really benefit from the value we're providing, they don't have to pay anything. The membership is free. And there's an epic amount of value in the free membership. Truly epic. Three of the best courses that we've ever offered. Uh, access to the forum, access to the office hours recordings, um, access to us really on an ad hoc basis. I mean, if we can help, we will. And uh, so if there are schools you think can benefit from this, please let me know. And Melissa Campbell has a question. She says, are we able to use those stock photos with our own content and on our own website? Yes. Yes, you absolutely are, Melissa. So um, for all of our third and fourth plane uh, members, the stock photos are available to you. You can use these for anything. So if you want to send out a postcard, um, emails, blogs, websites, uh, social posts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the ask that we have. In order to protect the value of what we provide to our members, um, if you ever do cancel your membership for any reason, which you can do at any time, by the way, all of our membership is month to month. Um, we never want to lock anybody in. But if you ever decide to cancel your membership, we ask that you discontinue use of the imagery. And again, that's just to make sure that the content we're pushing out doesn't become saturated or used by um, folks that aren't necessarily uh, a part of Neato. And, you know, I mean, forgive me for saying this, but kind of paying into the system that helps pay for these. Um, now, that doesn't mean you need to comb through everything you've ever done and, and tear apart your website. We're, we're, we're not saying that at all. None of us are litigious people. You're never going to get a cease and desist. Honestly, we probably won't even bring it up because it's awkward. But um, we would just we would just ask that, you know, I mean, if you do decide to cancel your membership that, um, you know, you don't actively push out those photos because it kind of starts to dilute um, their quality and their efficacy if everybody's using them um, without, you know, again, contributing to what ultimately allows us to produce more of the photos. So I hope I didn't say anything that just sounded offensive or um, too, you know, evil capitalist-y. Um, but did that answer your question, Melissa? Is that okay? Did I just put my foot in my mouth a little bit. I hope not. That's something I'm good at too. Um, but yeah, the, the stock photos are available to you uh, in perpetuity for, for anything. And we, we do have an open license. The license is in, again in perpetuity, which is something we were very careful about because um, you know you want to respect that too. Uh, any other questions from anybody? I'm, I'm done with my list. I'm free to answer anything. I also, uh, awesome. Melissa says, yes, thank you. So hopefully I didn't, I didn't offend. Um, I want to start doing something called the Montessori Hot Seat and the Montessori hot seat, and we I'm not married to that name, by the way, so if we want to change it, we absolutely can. But if somebody wants to volunteer, 
what what we can do is we can um, you would join me on the webinar, so you, you you know you and I would be speaking together, and we can walk through some of the issues you're having with your school or your website or your paid ad campaigns or your social profiles, and more than just talk about them, we'll fix them together. So if you say, hey, Cosm, I can't figure out how to do this uh, this Mailchimp automation stuff. Um, Let's do it together. Let's let's hop on, and people can watch us as we build uh, those campaigns out, as we customize the content, um, and we we begin to craft a real marketing narrative with whatever channel it is that's important to you. Now, some channels are going to be hard to to you know get done in an hour. We might not be able to build an entire Facebook campaign in an hour, but we could start. Uh, and get a really good start and build a really solid foundation. And then that that might let us segue into, you know, shoot, we could even build a series of these. So if you're willing to sit in the hot seat, what that means is you get free consulting. <laughs> you, you, you have, you know, kind of access to a, a higher level of um, uh, management that you might otherwise. So that's kind of the, the trade-off. And again, you'd be contributing to the community, which we really appreciate. I want these office hours to become something that people look forward to and that everybody knows they have access to if you have any, you know, real issues or questions or comments. Um, so please, please uh, take a, a advantage of that and, you know, feel free to email me or, or chat me um, if, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but yeah, anything else that I can help with? I don't want to sign off too soon, but I also don't want to belabor the process or make this video any more boring than it has to be. Um, I just want to close in saying that I am truly grateful to all of our members. We've had some amazing conversations and just some awesome feedback. I've been posting a lot of it in the Facebook group because I want to try to get people involved. But some of the responses and the results we're seeing in the short term have been um, just overwhelming. Um, you know, some of the, the changes we've been able to make in schools and some of the, the impact that we've been able to have. And, you know, very little of it is us. It's it's you taking action on, on what we recommend. And um, these recommendations come directly from, I think, one of the smartest marketers I know, uh, who also happens to be in conveniently a Montessori school owner. So Matt Hillis has um, built these strategies over time, over years and years and years. I think he's been doing this about 13 years. And um, we all now get to benefit from that knowledge and that thought leadership. So really grateful to him for that. Really grateful to all of you for being involved. Once again, stress anything you need, let us know. We're your marketing team now. And I mean that. I want this community to really kind of kind of rally around the fact that we're here to help each other. Um, so thank you all for being involved. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I, oh, and don't forget to sign up for the next office hours every Friday, same time. And if this time doesn't work for you, let me know because we can run too. Um, you know, for, for different schools or different time zones. So uh, again, thanks again so much for everyone. Uh, sorry if I was rambling a little bit. I'll see you next Friday.